Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. Back in 1985, Mitsubishi and Chrysler became equal partners in a new company called Diamond Star Motors. Based in a single factory in Illinois, their debut models, the Mitsubishi Eclipse, Eagle Talon, and Plymouth Laser, quickly developed a loyal fan base. But the collaboration was short-lived, with Chrysler selling their share back to Mitsubishi just six years later. This is the story of Diamond Star Motors. This is my old car. Introducing the Eclipse by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. Thanks for the many suggestions to review the Eclipse, Talon, and Laser triplets, as well as their origins as part of Diamond Star Motors. And again, many thanks to all the comments and emails with so many stories about your cars. So many more than I ever expected. Mitsubishi had plenty of history prior to first joining up with Chrysler in 1971. Although Mitsubishi's first car, which they called the Model A, dates back to 1917, most of their products before World War II were in aircraft and shipbuilding, and was officially named Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in 1934. But they also produced the PX33 in 1937, the first Japanese car with full-time four-wheel drive. Their car manufacturing became more prominent in the 50s and 60s, with models such as the Mitsubishi 500 and the Colt, a model name that would later be used on vehicles imported by Chrysler. By 1970, management at Mitsubishi saw their continued growth dependent on more exports and alliances with other larger automakers. In 1971, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries sold 15% of their company to Chrysler, which led to Chrysler importing the Mitsubishi Galant, which they branded as the Dodge and Plymouth Colt, and also the Plymouth Champ. By 1980, Mitsubishi was building more than a million cars each year, with nearly 10% of those cars being imported by Chrysler. Mitsubishi was also exporting their cars to their own dealerships in the United States. Because of voluntary import quotas, each car Mitsubishi brought to the U.S. to sell on their own was one less car that Chrysler could import, which strained the relationship between the two companies. The resolution was to build Mitsubishi cars in America to avoid the import quotas, but still maintain their much needed relationship with Chrysler. To do that, in 1985, Mitsubishi and Chrysler officially established Diamond Star Motors, or DSM, as a separate company to begin producing jointly developed cars in America. The name was derived from Mitsubishi's three diamond logo and Chrysler's Pentastar logo. That same year, they broke ground on a new 1.9 million square foot assembly plant in the town of Normal, Illinois, which would effectively become the new company's headquarters. Although the ownership of the company was officially a 50-50 merger, and although each company paid half of the $650 million cost to build the plant, management of the plant was given to Mitsubishi, and the engines and transmissions would still be built by Mitsubishi in Japan. With the plant construction completed in 1988, three new models were soon rolling off the assembly line in 1989 as 1990 models. Each of these cars shared their underpinnings with a sixth generation Mitsubishi Galant, which was selling in the U.S. since 1987, and sold as a Dodge 2000 GTX and Eagle 2000 GTX in Canada starting in 1989. Only one of the three new cars, the Eclipse, was branded as a Mitsubishi. Chrysler got the other two. First was the Plymouth Laser, which resurrected a name last used on the Dodge Daytona twin, the Chrysler Laser, in 1986. Soon afterwards came the Eagle Talon, the first and only sports car under Chrysler's newly created Eagle brand. Here, watch this launch. <laughs> Although each of the three cars had their own unique styling elements, it wasn't hard to tell that all three were essentially the same car. The first generation of DSM cars, often called 1G, was officially from 1990 to 1994. However, due to visual changes made in 1992, some may think that there were two generations during this time frame, but there really was only one often referred to as 1GA and 1GB, to identify those made before and after the 1992 refresh. The 1GA models had what almost every sports car had during this era, pop-up headlamps. But in the early 90s, that fad was nearing the end of its popularity, not to mention the added cost. So in 1992, the 1GB models switched to composite headlamps. All three cars had Mitsubishi-built four-cylinders, either naturally aspirated or turbocharged, and Mitsubishi built manual and automatic transmissions. The trim levels were named differently across the three models, but were otherwise the same. A 1.8 liter single overhead cam naturally aspirated four, making 92 horsepower, 
was available in the Base Eclipse and Eclipse GS, the Talon DL, and Base Laser. Moving up one level was a 2 liter double overhead cam naturally aspirated for, making 135 horsepower, available in the Eclipse GS DOHC, the Talon ES, and the Laser RS. Next level up was a turbo 2 liter 4, available in either front or all wheel drive, available in the Eclipse GST, the Talon TSI, and the Laser RS Turbo. By 1991, upgraded versions of the turbo all wheel drive models, making between 180 and 195 horsepower, were available on the Eclipse GSX and Talon TSI AWD. By 1992, the Laser was offered with the same upgrade, known as the RS Turbo AWD. Upon their release, DSM initially couldn't keep up with demand, and all three cars were especially well received within the automotive press, with the upgraded turbo models making it on Car & Driver's 10 best list for four straight years, from 1989 to 1992. Mitsubishi also extended the production of some of their existing Japan-built cars to the DSM factory, with the Mitsubishi Mirage and Eagle Summit sedans being built there between 1990 and 1993. So technically, they are also DSM cars, although a typical DSM fan wouldn't likely group the Mirage and Summit in with the Eclipse, Talon, and Laser. To add to the confusion, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT and its twin, the Dodge Stealth, are sometimes referred to as DSM cars, but they're not since they were only ever built in Japan. Despite the initial good sales and press for the Eclipse, Talon, and Laser, the internal goings-on at DSM was not so rosy. Although the styling departments between Mitsubishi and Chrysler collaborated, the same was not true for engineering and manufacturing. This, along with cultural barriers and a lack of transparency, led to an overall mistrust, which simply was not going to last long-term. This mistrust went all the way to the top with Chrysler CEO Lee Iacocca, regretting the decision to allow Mitsubishi to manage the DSM plant. It didn't help that by 1991, Chrysler's financial condition was worsening, so Iacocca agreed to sell their 50% share of DSM back to Mitsubishi. Chrysler still owned 24% of Mitsubishi Motors, but by 1993, they sold that as well. With their contract obligation still in place, the change in ownership didn't end production at the DSM plant, especially considering a second generation was in the works. The first generation completed with the end of the 1994 model year. However, one of the three, the Plymouth Laser, didn't make it that long, with production ending in 1994, and had no replacement, thanks to sales that had been dropping significantly each year. Plymouth was considered Chrysler's value brand, mostly selling sedans and minivans. This is the new Laser from Plymouth. That's right, Plymouth. So the Laser never really fit the brand's image, making its demise not that unexpected. The loss of the laser meant more capacity at the DSM factory for two more models to officially become DSM cars, the Mitsubishi Mirage Coupe and Gallant Sedan. <laughs> hey guys! The Eclipse and Talon would start their second generation, or 2G, in 1995, the same year that Diamond Star Motors officially changed its name to Mitsubishi Motors Manufacturing America. They continue to be built in the normal Illinois factory, and since their design originated when the company was still called Diamond Star Motors, the 2G cars are typically still accepted as DSM. Whereas future generations are not. The engine options changed on the base models, with Chrysler now supplying 2 liter 4s making between 140 and 150 horsepower. The 2G models are also split into A and B versions like the 1G cars, as new front and rear fascias debuted in 1997. The Eagle Talon lasted until 1998 and was also the last car of the dying Eagle brand. Well, aren't we speedy? Which Chrysler, or more accurately Daimler Chrysler by that point, had officially canceled that same year. The Spider convertible was added to the Eclipse lineup in 1996 and remained as an option through the third and fourth generations of the Eclipse up through 2011. Despite ownership of the former DSM plant now completely under Mitsubishi, and despite the death of the Eagle Talon, it wasn't the end of Chrysler's association with Mitsubishi, nor the end of vehicle production in normal Illinois. Starting in 1995, the Eclipse platform was used as a starting point for the Chrysler Sebring Coupe and the Dodge Avenger, with production of both cars being added to the growing list of cars built there. This continued in 2001 with a second generation Sebring Coupe and the Dodge Stratus Coupe, which replaced the Avenger. Mitsubishi would later add the production of the Endeavor SUV in 2004, 
followed by its replacement in 2012 with the Outlander. However, by the time production started on the Outlander, all other vehicle production in the normal Illinois plant had ended. With only a quarter of the plant's capacity in use, in 2015, Mitsubishi decided to end production there and shift all U.S. sales to imports. The normal Illinois plant officially closed in May of 2016, marking the end of all of their U.S. production. Today, the former home of Diamond Star Motors is now, for the first time, entirely American-owned. In 2017, it was purchased for $16 million by Rivian, an electric vehicle manufacturer founded in 2009. In 2021, they began production of electric trucks and SUVs, and production of delivery vans custom-made for Amazon may eventually begin there as well. Considering that Diamond Star Motors only existed as a company for 10 years, and only maintained joint ownership between Mitsubishi and Chrysler for the first six of those years, it appears, from a history point of view, as a failure. But don't tell that to the thousands of DSM fans, who consider these cars as the building blocks for some of the best Japanese tuner cars out there. If it wasn't for those pesky import quotas, these great future tuner cars may never have seen the light of day. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid-2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.